Hi all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, we're just gonna chuck it in reverse and go back one step. We're gonna to go to episode zero to explain the Idiot Proof Reef Tank. All right, so the other day I uh, dropped episode one of the uh, Idiot Proof Reef Tank and I started off with the tank already there and I must admit the um, the uh, interest in the video was huge and it was fantastic. There was a lot of comments and a lot of questions and it was um, really good, but it did uh, highlight something to me and that's um, that I probably jumped into uh, already selecting equipment a little bit quickly. I haven't really explained the purpose of the Idiot Proof Reef Tank. So I thought um, I'd chuck this episode in there as episode zero, a sneaky little uh, rewind. And I'll just explain the whole purpose of this uh, project and uh, what I'm hoping to get out of it so we can um, all work together and uh, as a community and help uh, shape what I think could be the, the best way to get more people into this hobby. So the first thing is the aim of this tank or this project is to get new people into reefing. It's not about creating the best nano ever. It's not about uh, working out how we can get as many fish as possible into this tank. It's not about uh, following the BRS ultra low maintenance tank. We definitely will look at some low maintenance aspects, but it's not about creating a tank um, that's got the best gear on it or anything like that. It's about creating a tank that gets people into this hobby. Now that's got to take into a few considerations. Obviously the first and foremost, and this is the one that I wanna always hold ourselves true to, is the complexity of this system. I want it to be the most simple and straightforward reef tank possible. So I don't want automatic water changes on there. I don't want uh, calcium reactors. I don't want um, skimmers with CO2 scrubbers. I want this to be a very easy to understand, a step, a little gateway into reefing. So bear in mind that we need to look at the complexity. We also need to look at the purchasing um, so when, when I say the purchasing, I mean the complexity of buying things. If you've ever spoken to someone um, outside of reefing, you've tried to explain something like a skimmer to them, forget even a calcium reactor, but even a skimmer is quite a difficult process. So I want to keep the complexity of the purchasing the equipment as low as possible. I want to keep the complexity of setting something up as low as possible. Hence why I've gone for an all-in-one tank rather than a tank with a sump because uh, the learning curve of uh, plumbing a sump and uh, understanding how a sump works is huge. So we've taken that out, we've just gone to a tank with a back section. And then finally, and probably one of the most important parts of complexity is the ongoing maintenance. We need this tank to be as easy as possible to keep. Now that may mean that we're gonna be a little bit limited in our uh, livestock selections. We might not be able to have a tang in the tank. We might not be able to have SPS. In fact, I would be certain we won't have SPS. We might not even be able to have LPS. It could be purely a, a soft coral tank. And if that's the case, that's absolutely fine because new people to the hobby don't mind. They don't care about Acropora or uh, Monty Caps or uh, Milliporas or even um, some of the LPS, but they do like soft corals. They love some beautiful Zoas. They like the big leathers. Um, that's the sort of thing we're gonna look to get into this tank and that will also keep our complexity regarding the maintenance as low as possible. All right, the next thing we need to have a look at and uh, bear in mind with every step of the way here is the purchase price and also the um, ongoing price. Whilst I'm not gonna say this is gonna be the cheapest nano tanker ever because there's absolutely ways that you can DIY stuff to give it the most affordable reef tank ever, but it's an aspect we need to keep in mind with this system. There's no use coming up with a system that's gonna be uh, really easy for someone new to understand into reef keeping, but it costs $20,000 because it's just gonna reduce the number of people that can get into this hobby. So I'm not gonna say that purchase price is the first priority. I'm not gonna keep everything to the cheapest, but I absolutely am gonna keep it as a priority. I'm not gonna buy the most expensive components and I'm not gonna buy every gadget and gizmo. Um, we'll leave that for the Little Mermaid, but um, we've just gotta, we just gotta keep the purchase price mindful. Um, whilst I'm happy to go to the pet store and uh, drop every dollar I've made in the last month um, over the counter to take home one uh, fancy bit of coral or a new bit of equipment on my tank, I recognize that that's really, really foreign. In fact, I remember when I first got into reefing and I went uh, to the fish shop and I came home and I had uh, one fish and one coral in the car and I'd spent $100 and I thought to myself that that was mad spending $100 on one fish and a bit of coral. Now that'd be a cheap uh, day out for me. So you've got to channel that uh, memory from when it was like when you first got in the hobby and just think that we've got to keep this stuff as affordable as possible. All right, the next point I want everyone to remember while we're going through this process is this is a learning curve and that this tank is 
for lack of better words, going to be a gateway drug. It doesn't mean that we're setting this tank up to be upgradable or future-proof or so that they can eventually move an SBS. If you want to do that and you go down that way with this uh, idiot-proof nano tank, sure, you can if you want to do that, but it's not a consideration when we're setting it up. The absolute consideration is just this tank and getting people into the hobby, okay? So if they want to upgrade and go to a six-foot tank um, with metal halides and have SBS and calcium reactors and auto water changes and um, skimmers with automated neck cleaners, sure, that, that's fine, you can do that, but that's separate to this project, all right? So we're just going to keep things simple. We're going to go with a KISS methodology. All right, now this is one that copped a, uh, uh, not flack, it was good. It was a, bit, it was a, a good debate and good conversation. The equipment that I'm going to come up with, in fact, not just equipment, the livestock, every basic, every, every purchase that I'm going to take throughout this process is purely a suggestion. I'm not saying that the water box is the only tank you could do this with. We had some fantastic suggestions around the Aqua One uh, mini reefs, around innovative marine nuvos, around uh, evolution aquas, around cades. Absolutely, all of these tanks can do it, that's fine. Just because I picked a water box to do this setup with does not mean that's the only option. And that's absolutely something I will keep in mind with every step of the way in this process. I'm not gonna just say, we're gonna put um, a Vortec wave maker on the tank because that's what you should get. If we go that way, I'll explain why I chose the Vortec and some other equipment that you could pick that may be more suitable for your outcome. Sure. Some things, there may only be one type of equipment that's suitable. I don't know, we haven't got that far yet, but if that's the case, I'll say and I'll say why. It's absolutely not to generate a shopping list that um, you must follow or your tank's gonna be a failure. So let's not try to get too caught up on the, um, on the uh, equipment choices because I can tell you now, well, at least this far anyway, this has not been sponsored in any way. So um, I'm not gonna just say that something's the best equipment to use because I got it for free. Um, I'm buying this equipment and I'm buying it with a purpose in mind. So I'll explain what that purpose is. If you wanna substitute something in instead of that piece of equipment, totally fine. There's no skin off my nose whatsoever. And uh, one of the uh, final components, um, it, it's definitely not the only consideration. We've gone through quite a few others, but one thing that I do want to uh, keep a factor in this project is to keep it as sustainable as possible. Now, I'm not suggesting uh, that we reduce down to having a shower once a week and uh, the tank can only be powered off solar, but I, I want to keep sustainability in mind here. It, it's a, it's a big part of my life, well, it's a medium part of my life and I'm trying to make it a big part of my life. And uh, we've, got a, um, we've got a moral responsibility uh, with uh, keeping marine reefs in our homes or offices. Um, and I think that the more we can support the sustainable way, so captive bred and aquacultured corals, equipment that uses the least amount of energy as possible, being mindful of the waste and the carbon footprint that our tank generates, I'm not suggesting we can have a zero carbon footprint um, tank or that uh, any other things that came up in the comments, but I'm just saying that we, I wanna try and keep sustainability as a, as a factor in this build. Um, so let's keep that in mind as we go as well. And uh, finally, one thing I'd really like to um, touch on is that after each video, I've m mentioned here that it'll be each week, but after each video, I wanna go through some of the comments and suggestions that have come through from the video before, just so that anyone following along in this process gets a good rounded opinion, not just mine, so we can see what the community's saying about uh, what light choice they would go with or what tank choice they would go with. So I plan on doing that every episode as well. So be sure to make sure you get your comments um, after each video because uh, as I've touched on a few times, I want this to be a community driven project, not just my opinion because um, Believe it or not, I don't know everything. All right, guys, that's all I've got for episode zero of the Idiot Proof Reef Tank. Um, I hope that's helped clear a few things up. Um, I'm looking at the next steps of equipment now and I'm trying to work out what's gonna be the best approach. So as soon as I've got some more equipment or some more steps for the tank, I'll drop the next video. I'm really looking forward to bringing this with you and hopefully helping um, people you know, friends, family, get into the marine reef uh, keeping hobby because it's such a, um, such an enjoyable hobby and it's uh, fantastic for kids, for um, adults, the learning involved in it, the science, the, the maths, it's just such a, um, it, it's, it's just a hobby that uh, is so much better than uh, just, I don't know, drinking or doing drugs or uh, I don't know, I was gonna say video games, but even video games aren't too bad these days and I don't mind a video game. But it's a really, it's, it's quite a healthy hobby and um, something that can be uh, very beneficial for all members or all walks of life. So. Um, 
I'm gonna stop babbling on now. Um, I just wanted to get this video out there just to explain some of the steps that I probably uh, got a little bit too excited with and rushed into episode one. So by all means, if you've got any further questions, be sure to pop them in the comment section down below. Um, other than that, I'm really looking forward to bringing the next video to you guys on the uh, Idiot Proof Reef Tank. Thanks for watching, bye.